but he's been playing well. Um, hit a few home runs down there, so um, that's what we decided. That's how we decided to go. I mean, our pitching, our bullpen's been pretty good with that day off. So we thought about bringing up another arm, but um, I feel pretty good about where we're at in our bullpen right now. In the bigger picture, where are you guys uh, with Garcia right now? I know you want him playing every day, ideally. Um, as a young kid, obviously you have a need right now, so you're not going to you know, worry about calling him up and seeing him on the bench a little bit, but, but so where do you feel like he is in his, in his total development right now? Yeah, he's, he's doing well. I mean, he, like I said, he, you know, part, part of, part of his, his uh, growing up is maturity and uh, learning how to play the game every day up here on the big league level. Um, but he's done well. Um, Matt Lee Corey Scott him. I talked to Matt. He said he's done well. Um, he's limiting the, the mental mistakes a lot down there and he's playing the, the, he's playing really well. He said his defense is actually has been really, really good as well. Um, making all the routine plays, which is always important um, and, and working good at bat. So, um, you know, I, I'm going to try as, as long as he's here, you know, pick, pick a day or two or three to see if uh, we can't stick him in there. I just don't want him to sit here as well. Um, Cause like I said, he is swinging the bat well. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure out some days where we could play him. Um, and if not, he understands. I talked to him. I said, Hey, you got to be re readily available you know, to come off the bench, either to play defense or to pinch hit as well. So he's just another another bat. As you know, some of these games, the last few days, you know, we could have used another hitter early, early in the game. So that, that could possibly happen. Hopefully not. But like I said, you never know. Right. And with Victor, do you have a sense right now if uh, – I know you want to make the move so you could backdate it. Do you feel like there is a good chance he'll be ready when he's eligible or that it could take longer than that? Yeah, right now, I mean, like I said, he's progressing pretty good. Um, I don't want to come out and say that, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully he comes, comes back uh, when he's supposed to, but it still remains to be seen. Um, but I just want to make sure that when he does come back, that he, he's ready. I mean, he plays, a, he plays an important position for us out in the outfield. I mean, he's the guy that controls center field for us. So uh, we want to make sure that, you know, when, he, when he's back out there, the, the short stops, the cuts, everything else doesn't hamper him. Um, so we want to make sure that when he comes back, he's going to do all those things uh, before we deem him ready. Jesse Doherty, Washington Post. Hey, Davey. Um, you guys have two infielders who are at the top of your system in the rankings and whatnot. So um, was Carter a consideration for this? And um, if not, or if he was, can you walk us through the decision to bring up Will Luis instead of him? Yeah, we, we, we thought about card as well. Um, but like I said, you know, I, I, I really thought, you know, Garcia could could help us, um, you know, not only just, you know, playing, but also off the bench as well. Um, and also, too, you know, um, he also could play shortstop fairly well. So, you know, to have him here just in case we need some or if we want to spell, uh, even though we have Jordy, um, or if we want to spell, uh, spell uh, Trey, um, we could do that as well. So, I mean, uh, and I, uh, for me, it's it's about also putting eyes on him because he's done well and he's been, you know he's a very important part of our our future uh, and see where he's at. And it's kind of nice to get him out here and get him working with Bogey. And uh, and like I said, we'll get him some games here soon. So it sounds like the defensive versatility meant a lot for you guys in this case, just with all the moving parts. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's very fair to say. Okay. Um, and Dave, you guys going to this series. Um, two and a half out in the division. I know it's early, maybe to look at standings, but given um, the record, do you feel like, I don't want to say luck, but do you feel like um, maybe you've gotten sort of lucky at this point and now that you can hit your stride and since you're still in the mix, maybe 2023 20, most years isn't that close to the top? Yeah, you know, the, the, the big thing is that we, it, for me is that we're starting to play well and we're starting to hit the ball. We're starting to drive in some runs. Um, my pitching's done well. So I'm, I'm not overly concerned about what other teams do. Um, right. You know, it is what it is. I mean, our division seems to be beating, beating each other up. Um, and, yeah, it's kind of nice that, you know, because we're 20 and 23, we're still, you know, we're still fighting, you know, to be at the top of the division. Um, but, you know, we still got a long way to go. And we still we got to continue to play consistently now. You know, and that's that's the key is to come out there, uh, score first, and uh, try to go 1-0 and today. So you have not changed your policy? You're not, like, looking at the standings every day? No. <laughs> Thanks for telling me, though. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Maria Torres, The Athletic. I have like three very different things to ask you about. Um, first, uh, Castro obviously is your, your your third baseman right now. I mean, do you 
do you guys anticipate like having him at second base at any point in the next few months? And, and if so, like, is he like practicing there? No, we, we, I mean, he's our third baseman and he's done really, really well over there. I mean, really well. So um, he's comfortable over there. We want to leave him over there. As you know, when we shift, a lot of times he got, he has to go over to that second base side and he does well there, there as well. So, um, but yeah, I don't want him to start thinking that he's going to play other positions. He's our third baseman. Uh, and that's where he's going to stay. Is that a matter like for you guys or for his benefit? I think that. it's for both because he's done so well there. I mean, it really has. Uh, he's picked it up so quick, you know, for a guy that's only played so many games over there before this year. I mean, he's done really, really well. And he's, he's actually getting better. His positioning is getting better. He's starting to understand where he needs to be every, every pitch. Uh, and it's been for us, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, Bogey talks about him all the time on how well he's adapted over there and um, how he's starting to move on his own, uh, which is really nice. Um, Davey, with, you know, the Reds coming to town, obviously Doolittle is as well. Um, do you know if there's like anything like pregame plan for him? And have you already spoken to him or seen him? I haven't spoken to him yet, but I, I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm going to end up giving him a hug here um, today at some point. Uh, so, you know, I, I can't wait to see him. As you all know, that he, he was a, a very important part of this ball club, but also of the city. You know, he did so many wonderful things for the for for the city. So um, we miss him. I'm glad, you know, he's doing well, um, but I can't wait to see him. It's pretty cool you get to hug him, huh? Yeah, I'm going to hug him. That's nice. <laughs> I'll have um, my mask on, but I'm going to hug him. <laughs> and, and on that same note, um, what what's the latest with Betty and Rainey? Uh, so Freddie, uh, Rainey is, um, is here with us. Uh, he got cleared. Um, he's going to throw a bullpen a day, and then we'll see where he's at. Fetty uh, will be cleared here in the next few days, and then we'll have to see where he's at as well. Um, I'm more concerned with Fetty because he missed some time. Um, he, we'll, we'll see where he's at, but he, he might have to go and, uh, and throw in Rochester in order to get him back, back in that routine. Thank you. Jessica Camarado, OB.com. Hey, Davey, going back to Doolittle for a second, um, you touched upon, you know, like what he meant to the city and every, everything, but what made him like one of the more unique players that you managed? Oh, he was, he was de definitely one of our vocal guys, um, but always, uh, always competing constantly. I mean, he was a guy that, you know, went out there and did, did everything again to help us win. He was our closer for many years. So, um, but what I love about him is that, um, he was a guy that I leaned towards, you know, to speak to the group, you know, when need, need be, and he voiced his opinion, and uh, he was really good at it. So when he spoke, everybody seemed to listen as well. You know, he's one of those kind of Zim guys where, uh, but he's always good to have around. He has such a unique personality, um, and, and he's always, he was always there for his teammates, wanted his teammates to do well, and was, was like having an extra coach sometimes, you know, when it came to that bullpen. You mentioned Zim for a second, but do you have that kind of person this season, that vocal person? Yeah, we, we have a few, but Zim's the one guy, you know, when he speaks, guys really, really hone in and listen. Uh, but we, you know, we have a lot of guys uh, that, that speak out and, and tend to step up when need be. And it's, it's been great. Um, on a different note, with, with Will Harris, I know you said he was going to be going to Dallas sometime this week. Do you know exactly when that's going to be? Uh, I, as of right now, I do not know, but it definitely um, will be sometime this week. As soon as I find out, I'll let you know more. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it's, it's, it's soon. Uh, you know, just to see, you know, we want to know, we want really want to know what's going on and uh, for his benefit and for ours. Do you know what that doctor is going to be looking for? I know it's still uh, early because the appointment hasn't happened, but. Right. I, I do not. So um, like I said, as soon as I get more specifics, I will let you know. Um, but he definitely is going to see somebody. Thank you. Patrick Reddington, Federal Baseball. Davey, sticking with the bullpen for a moment, uh, you joked recently about trying to get some emotion out of Sam Clay, uh, which might be hard for you to do apparently, but you are getting good addings out of him. Do you remember the first conversation you had with Mike Rizzo or whoever else in the organization brought him to your attention? And uh, do you remember what they said, if you do? And does it match what you've seen from him so far? Yeah, I mean, you know, we we knew that he was quite kid. You know, we had him all spring training, and uh, you know, tr just having conversation with, with him, it was it was very short and quick. Um, but you know, as, as we as I got to know him, you know, his personality is is what it is. Great kid, um, super kid, uh, and very in his own way, very competitive. Um, 
but yet, you know, like I said, it, 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 it's hard to bring that smile out of him. You know, uh, you know, the one time I did get him to smile, I thought I did a pretty good job of of, <laughs> of getting him to smile. But he's uh, he's always in tune. He's ready. He's always you know always wants to pitch. Um, he's a good teammate. I talked to Henry a lot about him, about how he you know how he is in the bullpen, and as he says, he's very in tune to what's going on. He's always asking questions. Uh, which is awesome for for a young young guy like him that's that's out there in the bullpen that has to pitch in, in big situations for us. So, um, but you know, we knew what you, we knew what we were going to get when we got him. I mean, we always do our diligence with these guys, and he, and he's a guy that we thought would fit in uh, with our club and our and our personality here as well. So, um, love him. You know, like I said, uh, I, I know what I'm going to get from him every time he steps out there, and he's been great. This is the second year in a row you've kind of did a deal like that. You brought Kyle Finnegan in before. Uh, how important is it to have scouts in the organization who can uh, recognize these guys and bring them to your attention? And then they're relatively low cost and guys who've been in the minor leagues their whole career until then. So clearly motivated to succeed at the majors. No, it's, 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 it's wonderful that we can have these guys go out there and scout in these guys and feel like, you know, we, we, we always talk about the kind of guys we want, you know, uh, personality wise, uh, stuff wise, whatever it can, may be. And these guys go out there and do their homework and do their due diligence on some of these guys. And when you're able to get a guy like Finnegan and Clay um, and, and get him here and, and, and have them do the things that they're doing, uh, it's awesome. And it's a testament to, you know, to our scouting department, our organization, because we're all in this together and we all have these conversations about what we look for and what we want. And, uh, and their jobs are to go out there and, and, and try to find these guys. And uh, they found two pretty good ones, uh, pretty special ones in Finnegan and Clay. Thank you, sir. Mark Zuckerman, MassSports.com. Hey, I, I don't know if you, you can shed more details, but what was the process for getting uh, Rainey uh, cleared? Because I know it hasn't been even like a full week since, uh, si since he had to go on the COVID IL. Yeah, so he had he had to test a bunch of times negative in a row in order for him to um, to come back. Uh, so you know he did that, and we had to clear it with uh, with MLB and DC as well. Uh, so he got cleared um, today. So like I said, he'll come back. He'll come in here today. He's here. I spoke to him. Um, he looks good. You know, I, you know, I know he, he didn't feel any symptoms. So he's going to go out there. And he's you know he's excited about to throw to throw a bullpen, and then from there we'll see where he's at. And is Fetty back in D.C. at least, or does he still have to be in Chicago until he's cleared? Yeah, uh, Fetty was able to make it back to D.C. So, okay. and like I said, he's still in quarantine, and we'll know some, uh, you know, as soon as possible we can. Uh, totally different subject here. Um, Doolittle the other day when we were talking to him was reminiscing about, I guess, two years ago in Cincinnati. Max had one of his best games, and that was the day that he kind of uh, – shunned you off the mound when you walked out there but sean also mentioned that uh that max was particularly um upset that day because you guys were wearing dark jerseys on a hot day do you, do you remember anything about that just what do you remember about that day and is that something that comes up a lot with the uh with any pictures or particularly with max it, it's funny because um it does come up you know especially you know so you, the other day you know we obviously played on sunday and uh, they wore their black jerseys, and uh, you know he comes in a dugout, and he, you know at typical Max, he's wondering why they got black jerseys on when it's ninety degrees out, um, and he says I, I don't, I, you know, and he brought it up. He said I don't like doing that. He said I want to wear the lightest color uh, jerseys we got that are available, whether it's home or on the road, uh, you know, because he, you know, he does. He says I get out there and I get heated and I sweat a lot, and and I want I want the lightest thing I could possibly wear, so. That, that was kind of part of his, his on removed that day. And yeah, we did have a pretty good conversation on the mound. Um, I can laugh about it now, <laughs> but it, it was kind of funny. One day, maybe I'll share it with you guys, but um, I'll have to talk to him about it first. <laughs> <laughs> but but he was even more ornery than normal that day. He was ornery. Yeah, he was definitely ornery because it was hot. And uh, like I said, he, you know, he was, he didn't want to wear that jersey. <laughs>